Hallelujah! <laughs> Welcome to Wednesday evening service here at Soul Restoration Ministry, a place where your inner man is revived. Listen, I, I just cannot believe that it's already February and we are almost done with the first two months of the year. It's only a short time ago that we were celebrating the New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. Christmas, and here we are. The weather's actually beginning to change, and you can tell that things are beginning to thaw. And you know what? When I wake up at 6 a.m., I actually begin to see a little bit of sunlight kind mm -hmm. of thing. So it shows that time is flying. And if time is flying, that means that our Jesus Christ, our Lord, is also coming very soon. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, I just want to say thank you. There are a million billion places and things you could be watching right now, but you decided to choose to fellowship and worship with us here at Soul Restoration Ministry. You are going to be blessed. I promise you you are going to be blessed. And today, especially, I am so excited. We're continuing our love series. And you know what? Our church is so blessed with so many different giftings and talents. And I tell you, I mean, it's not a joke when I say that, you know what? If anything were to go down, God can easily tap into the spiritual might and, and, and maturity that exists in our church to basically let somebody step up and do the work that he wants to do. So I'm very grateful for that. Please, you know how we do at Soul Restoration Ministry. Grab your notepad, grab a pen, focus, because we are about to go to school to learn how to walk in the spirit. So without any further ado, I'm gonna introduce my guest. Her name is Pam Garrity, and then we will get started, okay? So Pam, welcome. Thank good, you so much. Good to it's be here. It's an honor. We've known each other for a while. And who knew that one day we'll be sitting at a table sharing the gospel together. Amen. It's Amen. exciting. So please mm -hmm. say hello to everybody and we'll go from there. Hi, everybody. It's good to be here this afternoon, this evening. Um, I'm just excited for the topic. I'm excited for the conversation that um, Pastor Alvin and I will have. Um, we've been um, talking about love and about, uh, you know, how we can be empowered yes. to love God, love yes. our neighbor, love ourselves with the supernatural yes. love that yes. we read about in the scripture yes. and sometimes go, yes, I don't know how to do that. How do I do it? How yes. do I make it practical? Mm -hmm. Now that I have the head knowledge, how do I let that manifest in my daily walk of life? And that mm -hmm. is here what we're talking about. Okay, listen, Pam is very humble. She's very humble, but let me just tell them a bit about your accomplishments, okay? Pam is a licensed professional counselor, LPC, with the state of Ohio, okay? And she's actually associated, she does her work with the Associates of uh, Family Care in here in Ohio. I mean, she's really good at what she does, and she holds a master's in counseling ministries, and she attended that school with the Methodist Theological School in Ohio. So we're not just winging this, guys. We have a professional who's amazing on these specific topics who's going to be blessing us today. I know you don't have said your credentials, but I just want to make sure people know that you're truly a blessing. Thank okay? you. So, Pam, let's let's get into it, okay? Mm -hmm. Why don't we pray with the people real quick and we'll get mm -hmm. started. Father, in the name of Jesus, open our spirit, mm. open our hearts, open our ears, that we will hear this the way you intend for it to be heard. That Heavenly Father, these seeds will be dropped into our spirit and will divide the center between the soul and the spirit so that we will not operate with what we think is right or wrong, but we'll operate with what is life, which is your word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. So, Pam, let's get started here. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to love. Everybody wants to be like Roman, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love, you know, don't keep record of evil, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But you know what? When it comes to the execution. We all fall short. It's just the way it is. So let me start off with our first question being, what are your thoughts around that and how can we improve on that? Well, I think first of all, it's important to really understand what love is. What love is. Right, yes. so we, we see all these characteristics that, you know, God is love. So we mm -hmm. can read 1 Corinthians 13 and see that, yes, God is patient. God is, you know, loving, kind. kind. Yeah, all those it's things. Up, and it's, it's like, proud. well, he, he's God. He has an out. And we can look to Jesus mm -hmm. and, and see how he in, encountered people. And, yeah, well, of course, he's Jesus. And sometimes we forget he had both a divine nature and a human nature. He is two in one. 
Right. And, and he did say, he did, he did say, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Exactly. And if we look at that scripture closely, we see that's a little s. It's a little what? It's a little s. A little s. The spirit. The spirit is a little s. Is so a it's little not the Holy s. Ghost. It's not. We're talking no. about our spiritual. Our spirit. Being. Okay, got it. Our spirit is willing. Our flesh is weak. Okay. You know, and I think the first thing we have to understand mm -hmm. is 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 love outside of being an emotion and understanding that love is a choice. So we're, we're, so so you said the foundation is understand that love exists outside of emotion. And yes. it is a choice. It is a choice. Okay. Yes, we are chosen. God chose to love us. Okay. okay. And I think sometimes we get we got we get caught up in the the notions that you know society or or media or whatever that comes to us that love is just predominantly an emotion. And if I'm not attracted to this thing, or I, I don't want to do it. Or or you know if it doesn't feel good, like if it's not warm Feels. and fuzzy. Senses. Yes, absolutely. But but it's more than that because God God made us with emotions. Emotion mind is one way to look at it. And he made us with feelings. Okay. So mind and emotion have to come together. If you can imagine the two of those in a circle. Like a Venn diagram. Yes. Venn yes. Diagram. So on this side, we have reason mind. We have our thinking mind that, sure. you know, when we're in extremes of that, it can be a problem. Like sure. we get into an analysis paralysis, all caught up into, yeah, how do I do that? I have no idea how to do that. I don't have it within me. And I start to think, well, I got to rustle this thing up from within inside sure, myself sure, that sure. I don't have. Sure. Right. So there's that. And then on the other side, there's the motion again, speaking to, I don't feel like it. Or if I'm all the way over an emotion mind, it's like, you know, oh, Oh, I'm just so in love and you know I'm not thinking about what's going on and, and we can apply that idea to 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 both both extremes. So here you're overanalyzing it. Yes. Over here you're paralyzed by it. Right. You can't think straight. Right. And okay. another example of that is like in the area of anger, right? Yeah. So if I'm over here all the way in this side of the circle in anger, like I'm in like this emotional blackout. I'm enraged in my you cognitive function you, isn't there. You don't, you don't even think about what you're doing because you're just enraged. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Well, the place in the middle is what we call wise mind. Wise mind. Wise mind. So when we're balanced between our our mind and our emotion, we have resources available to us. And if we think about what is our source of wisdom, Holy Spirit, God. For those of us that are that are Christians, yes, we look at in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. And if we look closely at that, we're looking at logos, which is wisdom. As believers, we have access to that which is something that's in us, yes, because we are in Christ and Christ is in us. Mm -hmm. So we're not trying to rustle it up out of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're depending on the Holy Spirit to help yeah. us do yeah. that. Yeah. Does yeah. that make sense? Yes, yes. yes. It, it, it takes me back to, you know, understanding that I'm not God. I don't have that power within myself, but appropriating, so to speak, mm -hmm. the, the, the power that's deposited within mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. which, you know, Romans um, 7, 18 describes that. So if you want to... Ro Romans 7. Okay, fellas, we're going to Romans chapter 7, verse 18, right? Is that right? Romans 7, 18? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're, you, we're using the NIV tonight. All right. I believe that. Don't get me wrong. I love the King James Version. It's, it's my favorite of all time. It's one of my favorite. But because of how this topic it needs to it needs to be relatable. We just wanted to make sure that you weren't reading it in the old the old style of English, but it was pretty modern, okay, new international NIV so that you get it. All right, so here we go. Paul speaking said, For I know what good I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I, I can't carry it out. Mm -hmm. I have the desire, but I just can't carry it out. Mm -hmm. Should I keep on? Yeah, and he goes on okay. to, to draw that All out right. a little All more. Right. So he says, for I do not do the good that I want to do, but the evil that I don't want to do, this I keep on doing. Mm -hmm. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, 
but it is sin living in me that does it. Mm -hmm. Keep going? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind. That's what you were saying. Mm -hmm. And making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself in my mind am slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. Yes. Hmm. And then if we go on just from that, we see a very important word, therefore. 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 And in some ways that speaks to me kind of like, but God. But God. But God, therefore, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, mm. because through Christ Jesus, through the Christ law Jesus, of the Spirit, which is capital S, capital S, capital S yes, S. who gives life, life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Mm. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, mm -hmm. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. Mm -hmm. And so he condemned sin in the flesh mm -hmm. in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Like so he's giving you the fix. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes in our thinking or in our, you know, past yeah. teaching mm -hmm. or misunderstanding, we, we think that we have to rely on ourselves. We, we, we think that, yes, I get it. Christ has forgiven my sin. I've been forgiven. And, and to live in this life is we're kind of on our own. And yeah. that's not the truth. Because some teachings stop at that. Mm -hmm. You know, like Christ is my Savior, but He's also my Lord. It goes on from that. He came and died and rose again, ascended to heaven, mm -hmm. and sent the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I think oftentimes we don't really grasp what's appropriated to us there. Mm -hmm. And we don't take authority mm -hmm. that he's given us. We don't he, take the authority that he's given us. Yes, mm -hmm. to overcome these things. Sure, sure. If sure. that makes sense. It, and we go back into that wa wage with the little s in the flesh. You know, I think I think what you're trying to say, and Pam, let's 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 please elaborate. To yes. Our, our, our participants here, okay? You've said something which just caught my attention. Jesus Christ empowered us. He empowered us. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when we're walking through this Christian walk, we still don't take the designation that he gave us seriously. We assume he has the power, which is true. Mm -hmm. But as much as the power is his, he's designated it to us. And we have to make that decision to walk in the spirit. Okay. Absolutely. You were you were saying you know we were discussing earlier. You were talking about how love is a decision. So, love is a decision. Absolutely. Right. So, mm -hmm. Pam, think about it this way. I was sharing last time that. Let me put it this way. The issue is we have the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it's the tree literally of knowledge of good and evil. So there's the there's the there's the there's the the, the challenge there, good and evil, mm -hmm. right? But from what you're saying, we have to decide to walk in the spirit, which is the life. Yes. Right? Because there was a tree of life, and then the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So if we want to go with what is good and evil in our minds, we have a problem, right? As you're saying, we have to choose the spiritual one, which is the life, which is the love. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's how we have to do it. Uh -huh. And I think as, as humans and as, as, as Christians too, mm -hmm. um, 
we get caught up in this idea that, you know, the, 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 um, you know, Matthew 12, 28 through 34, it talks about, um, you know, the greatest commandment being love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, all our soul, I, our I, mind, I, I, I all our turn strength. So first. You're saying Mark, right? 12. Mark 12, 28 through 34. Okay. I have it open just in case we need, but please go ahead. Talk yeah. And so there, you know, it, the, 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 the commandments that, you know, supersede the law, so to speak, mm -hmm. because I'm giving you a new commandment, love the Lord, your God. Yep. with all your heart, soul, mind, and yep. strength. Mm -hmm. Love your neighbor likewise as yourself. Mm -hmm. Likewise, mm -hmm. the, you know, mm -hmm. likewise, the, this commandment is like that one. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we get it. We can in the spirit and worship God and love him. We can worship our neighbor, I'm sorry, um, love our neighbor in, in, in given service and whatever, but then when it comes to loving ourselves, there's nothing left over at the end of the day, yeah. right? Yeah. I think, you know, as moms, women especially, you know, there's one element, you know, we work, we take care of the kids, we come home, we make the meals, we're this, and at the end of the day, there's nothing left for us. You know, and sometimes, you know, pastors can fall oh, prey to that. Oh my gosh. You know, oh there's my only gosh. so much time in the day. Yes. You, you have no idea. You have yeah. no idea. Uh, you know, uh, so 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 this is how I, I look at it, Pam. Let's just say I'm a pastor, mm -hmm. okay, and I'm there and I'm raging over something. Something is bothering me. Those kind of things, right? You can tell that hmm, this feeling that I have is not right. This feeling that I'm having is not good. What is coming out of my emotion? Is that right? Mm -hmm. What is coming into my thought is not right. So naturally, I think my body will feed into it, Pam, and it will lead me to do the thing which is not good. That is mm -hmm. the sinful nature, right? Mm -hmm. But it feels good. I'm thinking about it. So we go with it. But then what you're trying to say is at some point, I need to just be able to seize my thought, seize my emotion of some sort and say, you know what? No. The spirit says love. Right. We have to balance the two. So, so you just... Right. And that's not to dismiss emotions because God gave us emotion for a reason. It. It's, it's, it's data, mm -hmm. you know, as well as logic and the ability to think that that's data. It's, 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 you know, everything he created is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of when something happens, for example, I want us to think ABC in a triangle, yeah. a acting event, something activating event, something happens. Yeah. And I have a thought about that. Yes. That thought is what's informing my emotion. Yes. In this respect, I get cut off in traffic and I'm, you know, I'm in of a course, hurry. I get it. And my first reaction is, you know, <laughs> that guy shouldn't have cut me off. Well, and the what, thought what is what <laughs> is feeding the emotion. Yeah. And the three things are intricately related. Okay. So what's important is to check the rationality of the thought against scripture. Okay, okay, you're helping me here. Okay. I need you to look in the camera uh -huh. and tell them exactly what you said, the triangle thing and then the, 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 the rationale is, please. Just you, that, you're okay. okay, so what we wanna what, imagine is a, is a triangle, it's interrelated, so we have A over here, A is activating events, so something so happened. Something happened, the incident that occurred. Or we see something. We see something. Right. Something triggered. The trigger. Yeah. Or, or we're just we we're just living our life, and life happens. So sure. the thing, a activating event. Okay. B is the belief or the thought that we have about the activating event. So something happened. The belief and the thought which we have about that event. Okay. Good. Right. So you're driving in traffic. Somebody caught you off. The the, the, the thought is. I, I shouldn't have cut me off. That's A. You then, the thought is, okay, good. Got right. it, got it, got it. And that got can it. spark your anger. C is the consequence. So consequence is the emotion and or the behavior. Sure. Right? And the, the three things are very intricately. And it happens like that. It, it happens instantaneously. It happened. I thought it. Consequence. Boom, 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 boom. Seconds. Right, right. <laughs> you don't even have time to even think, think it through as a process. It all occurred like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. And so what's important as believers to think is to learn how to think about what we think about. Okay, okay, okay. Think okay. about this what we think about. Mm -hmm. I got to make sure I hear that. We need to think about what we think about. Mm -hmm. Pam, I, 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 I have never heard that before. 
But keep going. We'll come back to that. Right. I'm going to put that in my, I'll come back to that, but keep going. Yeah, because scripture tells us whatever is righteous, whatever is good, whatever is lovely, whatever is true, that's, you know, may the meditation of my heart and the words of my lips be pleasing to you. Because to feed otherwise, we're going to have a negative response. We're going to have a negative emotion. Think about what, what you think, think about. about what you're thinking about. Right. So when he said whatever is pure, whatever is true, think on these things. Right. And if we want to take that back to self-love, we have to agree with what he says about us. Because I remember as a little girl, I'm going to share a little a story, and I'm sure maybe other people have heard this. Let's look in the camera. And yeah. Let me you. Well, when I was a little girl, it, 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 something my mom would always say to me was, Pammy, honey, you can't love anyone else until you love yourself. You cannot love anybody else until you love yourself. Okay, I'm with you. All right, you know, I'm with you. everything God created, what he, he deemed good. And as, as, a, as a child, as a daughter of the Most High King, you know, I, and what I have to do is test the reality or the thoughts that I have about myself, the thoughts I have about others against the reality of what Scripture says. And so, it, it, and it's something that we do in therapy. What I just described is something that's called cognitive behavioral therapy. It, it, and I'm constantly challenging people to think about what you think about because the offense is not the problem. The problem is what you think about the offense. The offense is not the problem. It's how you think about the offense. Mm -hmm. You're right. <laughs> and you know, I had a really interesting conversation with my nephew yesterday, yeah. and, and, and this was, this was mm -hmm. eye-opening to me, and my response to him after he said it was, nephew, you're closer to the kingdom than you think you are. Yeah. We were talking about people taking offense, which yeah. I like that, it, that, that when we use that term, we talk about take offense. So yeah. I'm going to demonstrate something here. Okay. Like, take offense. I took offense. Yeah, you, you could have chosen not to. And what he said to me, yeah, yeah, here, here's an offense, right? Here, here, here's an offense. The guy caught me off in traffic. I can choose to take it or not. And what my nephew said to me is what benefit is there to taking offense? Okay. Grab the, grab the bottle again. Yeah. Intrinsically, this is what human beings do. You know, a, a, a healthy... We take offense. We, yeah. Uh-huh. It just comes and we take it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So we can have a talk about okay. boundaries. After okay, that. you want to yeah. you want to talk about practicality. Until now, I just thought that the offense was automatic, but I literally chose to take. And you know, sometimes we look for offenses. So when you say you took offense, you literally took offense. Mm -hmm. Or it's we not, look for him. Mm -hmm. It's not, I, 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 I took the offense. And I can say, I don't want to take the offense. Well, yeah, because scripture tells us in this life we will have trouble. Well, uh, okay, so you said yeah. two things. Yeah, I said two things. Think about the thing. You are thinking about. Think about what you think about. In in the 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 scripture that applies to that, um, I can look up your writing on the the, the sheet I'm using. Is that we, we are called Sorry. to take every thought captive, yeah. and submit it to to Christ, right? Uh, Corinthians, you're thinking about First Corinthians a little. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Right. Mm -hmm. The weapons of our warfare are not kind of, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. Right, imagination, casting down. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through yeah, 5. Yeah. yeah, so so for though we walk in the flesh, mm -hmm. we don't war after the flesh. Mm -hmm. We don't, I want to say, respond in the flesh, right? Because we're mm -hmm. walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. For the weapons of our warfare aren't mm -hmm. carnal. They're not mm -hmm. revenge. They're not yelling back. They're not, you know, they're yeah, not whatever. Casting Absolutely. Down. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of God. Okay, so that is the Christian thinking about the thing they're thinking about. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus. And it's about training ourselves to do this, about learning how to do that. So, so let, let's, let's be practical. Guys, mm -hmm. listen. 
Listen, I wish <laughs> we got to do more of this, okay? I, I wait. This this is revelation to me. So, Pam, let me ask you this: mm -hmm. When I'm there and the the thoughts are coming, da 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 da. da okay, it's it's racing. You're you're saying the interruption is yow. Alvin, think about the thing you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Is it godly? Is it spiritual? Yes. And if it's not, and I know it's not, cast it out. Stop it. Absolutely. Why do we allow ourselves to just keep going? Why do we do that? Is it something we enjoy? Does it feed into our, it feeds into our sin? Why, why do we do that? It does. And I think sometimes, a lot of times, I mean, I do it myself. I, I, I can walk around in what I call automatic pilot. I mean, we're just responding to everything rather than being fully present and aware. And what's interesting, I'll, I'll take us back to the, the, to the, illustration of someone cuts me off in traffic cuts you know I, I, I you know another response is like oh, he just scared me right and, and so when when we're operating in that place that is is a fear or anxiety they've actually done brain studies where you know the 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 primitive part of our brain, mm -hmm. th this part of our brain is lit up because, you know, God designed us to understand when, when there are, are things, you know, there's two sides to fear. There are things that are legitimately um, likely to, to be afraid of, you know, like if I'm out walking around and I see a bear, I have to know that bears can eat me. You yeah. know, and so if we hadn't learned that, right. yeah, back generations ago, you and I wouldn't be yeah. having this conversation because the bears would eat me. You know, the problem is when it's just somebody cut me off in traffic and I feel like a bear just ate me. You're a bunch of dreams. That's a Now, the way we balance that, again, it's going back to emotion mind, cognitive mind, the place in wise mind and brain studies have showed that when we're in that state, that like our cognitive function is like, not lit up and okay. we usually are holding our breath or we're hyperventilating okay okay pal okay i okay. know i said it i i, you, I you, you, fire hosed you there <laughs> i deserve the fire hose because i need to be wet from my anger sometimes <laughs> all right mm -hmm. so this is good but i i just never thought of as a believer i know about renewing your mind in first grade romans chapter 12 verse 2 all that kind of stuff right but I just never ever thought about consciously thinking about what I'm thinking and casting down things that I know are not godly. Now, this thing you just illustrated about taking offense, mm -hmm. until now, I didn't realize I had the capacity to say I wouldn't take it. Why take it? So the guy crossed me off on the road. Listen to what this woman of God is saying. The guy crosses you off the road. The, the person said whatever they said. I have the power to take the mm -hmm. offense, or I can say, you know what? No, I, I, I don't. I no. And if you think about it, and look at all the times that that Jesus was offended, he didn't take the offense. He didn't take the offense. I mean, I mean, if, if they mocked him and whatever. I mean, you know, the the the, the, the when we look at the, his last days, and he spoke to the governmental authorities when they talked to him, but to the religious folks that were, you know, Pharisees and K and all he these He remained people. silent. He did not take the offense. He didn't take the offense. What? Well, okay. Why? Why have? Why don't we? What? Why don't we, okay, why didn't I know that? Because I didn't, why, why do we do it? Well, we can't know what we don't know, right? There's, we can't know, it wasn't taught to us, you know? And so when we think about, okay, so we look at Jesus, we're to take on the humble nature that he took on. Jesus Christ did not take the offense. And we have, hmm. But we can take the offense. We take it all the time. We just take the offenses. And it kind of goes back to, too, though, we don't like to feel powerless. So if you take the offense, you feel like... Well, yeah, you got... Oh, you made me mad. Or you hurt my feelings. Do I have the power to be revengeful. I have the power to take you through justice, which is against spiritual law. Yeah, back to what, what nephew asked, what benefit offense? Which, I mean, you, you talked to us recently about God knew what vengeance would do to him. 
Christ knew what vengeance would have done to him. We know, I, I can speak as a frail human being, that wanting vengeance, that nursing that, that holding on to that, that not letting it go, I know what degree of bitterness it can take you to. And it can also take us to some serious mental illness because if we don't check those thoughts, if we don't submit them um, to Christ, it can take us into some dark, dangerous places for ourselves, depression, and to dark, and dangerous places with other people. So, 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 so you know what? It's interesting, right? Because I think what you shared with me goes back to Isaiah. He said, I will not remember. So remember is that mental replay. Mm -hmm. Thoughts. I will not remember your sins mm -hmm. for my own sake. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he goes in Micah 7 and says, I cast into the sea, I remove it from cast. So, so what you're saying is, <clears throat> when the offend act happens, we have a decision. Take it. <laughs> yeah, I got the fish on the hook now. Take it. There it is. Fish is on the hook. So now you take it, uh -huh. and then it starts replaying. Yeah, and it, mentally, it's wiggling it around there. You, mm -hmm. And then the devil takes hold of that thought. And once you are thinking that way, the Bible says, be reduced by the transformation of your mind. So once you're thinking that way, you become that offense. You become offensive. You become yeah, offensive. Absolutely. You, become, you literally become that offense. Mm -hmm. And what we don't realize in that moment, too, is not only is that offense on the hook, the person that offended us, we're on the hook in front of it. You know what, Pam? I tell you, what you're saying is incredible because I was listening to this man of God, Prophet Sakodia, and he said something. He said, it begins with a little fault. Then it becomes offense. Then it becomes anger. And when it's full blown, it becomes bitterness. Mm -hmm. So it's just basically higher degrees of meditating mm -hmm. on that little thing that happened. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you know, you're a different human being. And all you did was you did the mistake which you just talked about, which is you took the offense. Yeah, and you what we take it. what we feed grows. I mean, it's a principle in the universe. What we feed grows. And I didn't have to take the offense. I can literally have the power to say, no, no, I am not taking that offense. Mm -hmm. And then also, on the, uh, additionally, like, you know, sometimes, okay, so you've talked recently about um, the, the, the credit card of debts that we've accumulated towards other people, over right? Time, time. Right? Uh, what came to my mind as I've listened to that is, you know, um, as a financial person too, um, you know, when our, when we, over exceed our credit limits to get out of trouble the best thing that we can do is like tear up the credit card throw it away and start paying down the debts so there's there's you know there are a lot of people christians there are a lot of bitter christians or hurting christians and not just you know carrying around the trauma that's not been processed that they haven't talked to other people about that they haven't confess to God, you know, because where else can we take these things except to the spirit, to the cross? Because that suffering is there. That's where his lives and ours intersect, is at every place that we've suffered. Hey, Pastor Alvin here. If you listened to what Pam shared with us in this session here, and you even took 5% of what she was saying as truth, which I believe is true, I don't know how your life is not going to be changed. That was sincere. It was from the heart. And you know what? She really brought up some good things concerning how your life can change for the good. We all yearn to do what is love. But she shared with us keys as to how we can actually get it done. So we can live the good part of Romans chapter 7. We're going to do part 2. You cannot afford to miss it. You, you have to learn more. There is so much more that this woman has in her well, and we are going to be blessed by that. So thank you for joining us today. Next week, make it an appointment to be here so that we can tap more into that well. We love you. God bless you. Take care. See you next time.